Welcome back to Market on Close. Taking a break from the macro to dive into the world of pharmaceuticals with the chief financial officer at Pfizer, where shares are having a bit of a rough session here near 52-week lows as the market firms up. Dave Denton has a lot on his mind. Dave, great to meet you in person. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Uh, my pleasure to be with you today. Appreciate that. Uh, right out of the gate, let's talk about this uh, war that seems to be heating up pretty quick to uh, combat obesity from a pharmaceutical standpoint. Eli Lilly had some results the market's happy with. You guys at Pfizer decided to hold off on one of your obesity treatments, yeah. but you still have another one in the pipeline. Yeah, I think the good news is we had two assets in the clinic. Uh, we always knew that we were going to pick the best one coming okay. out of the clinic. Uh, we've now chosen one to move forward into finish up phase two and hopefully into phase three. It's a very large clinical trial with over 1,400 patients wow. uh, in the trial at the moment. This is going to be a really big marketplace. This market for obesity and diabetes is probably going to be in excess of $100 billion in totality. And we think we can be a, a significant player uh, ultimately in the market with our products, if successful. What does that timeline look like? I know you're the financial officer, but we yeah. like to talk science a little yeah. too here. Any uh, kind of clarity on what that timeline might be to where the obesity efforts show up in the bottom line? Yeah, we probably have a couple years of work behind us to make sure that the, the product's successful one in the clinic and ultimately uh, into the commercial markets. But we have a couple years left and we're investing heavily behind it. We're Optimistic, but you know, cautious. This is drug development, and we have to work one for patient safety, but ultimately get to a product that's successful in the marketplace. There's so much going on at Pfizer right now. Yeah. It's honestly hard to know where to start. Yeah. I mean, your guys' pipeline of stuff you're working on is lengthy. Yeah. You're working in an acquisition of Seagen right. for uh, forty billion dollars, roughly. Right. The stock market seems to have a little bit of myopia yeah. associating you guys with the incredible work you did, of course, with the COVID yeah. vaccine. Yeah. How yeah. difficult has it been to kind of separate the investor base saying, hey, you know, we're, we're moving on? Yeah, I think it's, it's a really good question. You know, obviously, we're coming off the highs of COVID in 2022. The company posted about $100 billion in revenue, over half of that was related to the COVID franchise. Obviously, COVID is moving from a crisis phase more to a managed phase, and therefore revenues are coming down in that franchise. But more importantly, our core business, ex-COVID, is really doing quite well. Uh, we expect revenue growth this year of 7 to 9%. We have the largest amount of new product launches and indications in, in over the next really three quarters that the company's ever had in its history. Wow. We'll have 19 new products and indications onto the market uh, here shortly. So we're investing ahead of those indications and those new products to ensure that the growth in the back half of the decade is very robust. Even despite all that investment, yeah. Uh, you still paid out and up the dividend in the last quarter, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. Uh, the earnings and sales beat the expectations Street had for you, though they did show the decline on the year-over-year -year basis. So what you're saying is that you guys are troughing out on that rate of change for your revenues and profits. That, that's correct. I think what we've done, and particularly around the CGEN acquisition and other business development work that we've done over the last really year and a half, is we've solidified our growth plan from 2025 to 2030, essentially the back half of the decade. Because we, as you know, we face some uh, uh, products that lose exclusivity. With the pipeline that we have and the product launches that we're executing now, that's going to more than offset those LOEs. And with our business development effort, we're going to add, at the moment, $20 billion of peak revenue by 2030 from a business development perspective. Wow. And uh, how much of that is dependent on that long list of record, you know, drug uh, uh, drugs in the pipeline, applications, yeah. filings. The number you just gave me from revenue is that conditional? It, on it, it is. So we, if you look at our stair step from 25 to 30, we have about 17 billion dollars of LOEs, but we we have in the pipeline today in launches, near-term launches revenue that we expect of about 20 billion dollars and then we have another 25 billion dollar target for business development revenues by 2030. Okay now the CGEN uh, acquisition obviously as a drug maker you have to be involved and on the leading front for yep. cancer sure. and oncology of all forms. Yeah. Yeah. If um, these other uh, the LOEs and the other yeah. drugs uh, do not go perfectly according to what you're planning. Yeah. Will there be more M&A? How do you view M&A? Do you view it as, yeah. okay, we tried something, maybe it didn't work on our first couple swings, we want to go somewhere that has already yeah. 
carved out a pipeline of commercially available stuff that we can take up and take it right to our bottom line. Yeah, we've been very disciplined in our business development effort. First and foremost, we're, tr we're working to attract the best science available to us externally and internalizing that within Pfizer. Uh, clearly, the acquisitions from the business development perspective that we've done most recently have been companies that have products that are existing products on the marketplace that essentially, in some cases, de-risk, if you will, the investment in those uh, activities. So, Seagen's a good example. They have four products currently on the marketplace that are very productive and doing really well for patients. At the same time, uh, within the last year, we acquired Biohaven, which has a really nice product uh, in the migraine franchise yes. uh, in therapeutic area. That product's doing quite well for us. So I think those are examples of things where we've leaned in to business development to grow our top line and bottom line. That's the, how does that relate to Pfizer's nasal spray uh, uh, development for migraines as well? Yeah, it's a great great example because what we did is we acquired Biohaven. They had a product, Nurtec, already in the market and they had this under development. We took it to the final stage and now mm. have brought it to the marketplace. Do you feel that that is a privilege as being a, one of the, and changes by market cap, but yeah. one of the biggest and leading pharmaceutical companies with the amount of cash flow that you've got, yeah. the amount of dividend you're paying out, you feel comfortable where acquisitions can be a success story for you? They can be a huge success for both top line and bottom line, and more importantly, from a shareholder perspective long term, we're investing such that shareholders win over the long term. So this is an investment, not just from a revenue perspective, but more importantly, from a returns perspective. Uh, buybacks, how did those play a role in your mind as CFO compared to, uh, yep. there's a lot of stuff you're spending money on. Spend on yeah. money on research, spending money on M&A. Yeah. Got the dividend. Buying up shares when they're at 52 week lows, almost breaking them here? Yeah, no, what, what we've done historically over the last uh, really 24 months, we've taken our capital allocation program and we've really centralized it really in two areas. One is in the BD effort to make sure that we're acquiring the best science and investing within our internal pipeline to make sure that we get products to marketplace. So. Clearly that's been job one. Job two has been supporting our dividends. And job three is really from a share buyback perspective. We've, not, we've held off that, I'll say that pillar of our capital allocation strategy. As we get Seijin uh, fully closed and we get that integrated, we will now get probably more balance between business development, investing in the core, doing uh, increases in our dividends and doing a balanced share repurchase program. But that's right. a little bit in the future. Have a lot to uh, balance uh, with uh, a lot of research effort uh, mixed into it too. Uh, but uh, you know, kind of reminds me of the phrase, uh, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> a very high bar post COVID from what you guys did with the shots. Thanks yeah. for giving us the update and the plan, yeah. Dave. Thank you, my pleasure. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Dave Dins, Chief Financial Officer at Pfizer.